Then Abrar has asked a question that is confused and he wants to know why should he not accept Hinduism because he has read uh, some books or some articles which say that even Veda talks about science, about creation of the earth, etc. So why shouldn't he follow the Veda? And if you have heard my, my lectures and I have told that very often that Allah says in the Quran in Surah Raj chapter number 13 verse number 38 that we call the Ajin Kitab. In every age have we sent a revelation. By name, only four revelations are mentioned in the Quran. Torah, Zabur, Injil and the Quran. Torah was the Vahi, the revelation which was revealed to Moses, peace be upon him. Zabur was the revelation, the Vahi, which was revealed to the David, peace be upon him. Injil was the Vahi, the revelation which was, given to, which was revealed to Jesus, peace be upon him. And Quran is the last and final revelation which was revealed to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But the Quran says there were many revelations. For example, Quran says, Suhuf Ibrahim. The books of Ibrahim. There were many. By name only four are mentioned. So can we consider Veda to be a revelation of God? If you ask me and I have said that earlier, I cannot say for sure. Maybe, maybe not. Even if you consider Veda to be the revelation of God, all the revelations that came before the Quran, they were meant only for a particular group of people and for a particular time period. <coughs> Quran is the last and final revelation which was revealed to the last and final messenger. It was not meant only for the Muslims or the Arabs, it was meant for the whole of humanity. And it was not meant to be followed only for a particular time period, it was to be followed till eternity. And I've said this in various of my talks. What you have to realize that all the other revelation, even if they were revelations of God, whether they are not, we don't know. By name, we know four. Whether Veda was or not, we don't know. Even if it was, it was meant for those people and for that time. Today, we know for sure that all the revelations that have been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or all those scriptures that claim to be revelation the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except for the Quran all have been corrupt. One of the staunchest critics of Islam by the name of William Muir 200 years ago even though he was a critic of Islam he says there is no book which has been as pure as the Quran for 12 centuries. 200 years ago he said this being one of the staunchest critics of Islam, he had to agree as far as the Quran is concerned, the Quran is pure. So all the revelations, even those mentioned in the Quran, Torah, Zabur, Injil, it is not available in the pure form. What you have today, Bible, is the corrupted form of the Injil. What you have, the five books of Pentateuch of the Old Testament, they are the corrupted form of Torah. The Psalm that you have is the corrupted form of Zabur. The only book that is maintained this pure form is the Quran. Coming to your question now that Veda has got some scientific fact. I do agree. I know that. Just because Veda has some scientific fact, that does not make it the word of God. There are many unscientific facts in the Veda. I don't want to tell because I normally don't talk about the contradictions in the religious scriptures or the unscientific points unless I'm forced to in a question and session or I'm forced to in a debate like I had a debate on Quran and the Bible in the light of science and when a person, William Campbell wrote a book saying there are 38 scientific errors in the Quran, I replied to all and then I pointed some mistakes in the Bible and scientific errors which I don't intend taking out scientific mistakes in the Veda now. For you, just Google, just scientific errors in the Veda, you'll find many. Umpty. I'm not here to take out the mistake. Yes, in my lecture of similarities between Islam and Hinduism, I've pointed out many similarities. Talking about that is there in the Quran and the Veda. While I am doing this, I am trying to tell the Hindus that at least follow those which are common. That doesn't mean there are mistakes. There are umpteen number of mistakes, there are umpteen number of things which are illogical, there are umpteen number of things which you cannot follow. But my thing is, since you Hindus believe Veda to be the word of God, at least follow what is common, at least believe in one God. The Veda says believe in one God. There are parts of Veda which also talks about idol worship. What do we have to do? Not Veda, other scriptures like Manu Smithi, etc. So what you have to realize that it's a mixture. There are many contradictions, there are many mistakes, there are many logical things, very unscientific things. So you saying you are confused and you want to follow Hinduism because the knowledge of Veda is weak. If you really study in depth the Veda, you will find many mistakes. So that's the reason just because I talk about the similarities in my talk doesn't mean I am only talking about the good points. So that I get the Hindu closer to Islam. They don't have alcohol, don't gamble, don't have pork, be honest, give charity. All these things that are about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, about Tawheed. So, it is your ignorance that just because you find two scientific errors, two scientific points in the Veda, that makes it the word of God. No. 
Therefore, you should do research. You can hear my videos on Hinduism and Islam. And inshallah, that will benefit you. And hope you are guided to the straight path.